And I'm not capping, but I think Apostle is one of the most honest brothers that I have um, came across when it deals with the Bible. At least he admits that the Bible today, this book that I'm holding up, have been tampered with, have been translated through another group of people, but he's not saying the transcripts. Get what I'm saying? He's not saying the original writing of the Most High, of the of God. He's saying this book here, this is why you can find um, mistakes in it, contradictions, because it's been tampered with. You disagree with that. Why? Well, I'm starting to um follow my man, my man, um Apostle. You familiar with Apostle, right? The one that plays harmonica? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, Apostle, he keeps it real all the time. He teaches now that the Bible have been translated by the white man. And he teaches that the white man is the devil. Not all white men, but the white man. So in that teaching, I take it like God and the devil shares this book right here. Oh, wow. I mean, hey, this is coming out of the mouth of these brothers, man. But he ain't looking at it like that. When you make statements like the white man translated the Bible, you see my point where I'm going at vocab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's given and then I ask way too much power. God right, and then ready. I ask him, is the white man the devil? And you say, Yeah. So what you just told me was God and the devil shares this book together. And God's words can't be protected. What do you say to that, though, brother? And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling with um, Apostle on this. Yeah, well, I mean, you're both confused then. See, <laughs> Jesus said the scripture cannot be broken. And he also said that all this other stuff's going to fade away. It's going to pass away like mist, like flowers. But God's word will forever stand. So the idea that anybody could come in and permanently corrupt the stream of God's word, if that could happen at that uh, at that level where it would be so corrupted we wouldn't know what was what, I would wonder if that God's really got it all together because he can't even protect his own book. But I do believe he has providentially preserved his own book. Um, it, that's why we look at Greek and Hebrew. That's why we look at textual criticism. But to, uh, to say, when were white people ever in charge of the Bible when it mattered? What I mean by that is, if you talk about Europeans, they're getting a hold of the Bible, making translations after the Greek and the Hebrew is long done. They're not part of the initial process. Europeans are over here on the translation side, putting it in English or whatever European languages are. They're not in any way responsible, if you want to use that terminology, for our manuscripts. And that's where we get the Bible from, is from the ancient manuscripts, not from some translation. So it's just a crazy idea. I would debate him on that. God has preserved his word. And uh, no white man or anybody else is going to get in there and ruin it and corrupt it so we don't know what's what. That's just a way to be like the devil because you know what the devil came and he told Eve right there in Genesis? Hath yeah. God truly said? That's what the devil told Eve. Step one of the devil's always to get you question God's word. Now, I know you don't believe, Sonnet, and I understand that, but uh, when I say... I would like you to embrace Messiah. You know, I'm not I'm not joking. You know, I view you as somebody who's been a spiritual seeker and looking at these matters for a long time. And uh, the Lord's not done with you. And just like he's not done with me and he's not done with the people in this audience. So but I do really hope for that, you know. But, yeah, Apostle's wrong. I, I love him. He's a good harmonica player, but he's definitely wrong on that. Now, what about this Passover? Yes. Um, real quick, let me get, we're going to get to it. But when you make statements like, you know, and Jesus said, and Jesus said this, and Jesus said that. It is not a fact, though, vocab, that Jesus said any of these things. It's something that you're reading that Jesus said. We don't hear Jesus saying any of that. So where your facts at, you know, source it up. We don't see none of that. Well, we do see very, very old manuscripts 
in Greek language when you're talking about Jesus, very close to the time of Christ. In fact, do you know where our oldest part of a manuscript, what part of the world it comes from? Egypt. Our oldest fragment of a manuscript of the New Testament, now I'm not talking about the Old Testament, of the New Testament, because you mentioned Jesus, comes from basically what was a trash dump from Egypt. John Ryland's papyrus, P52, John 18, and in that, it's dated around 125. You have Jesus having a conversation with Pilate who is a clear historical figure, attested to not only by Josephus and other historians, but Pilate is also attested to by actual archaeological data. 1971, we discovered something at Caesarea Maritime and actually mentions his name in Latin. Pilate's a real person. The very first New Testament manuscript we have, P52, John Ryland's Papyrus, has Jesus Christ having a conversation with a known historical figure. So we're talking 125. That's very early to get your first copies of the New Testament all the way to Egypt. So, I understand people want to question the Bible, but we have very, very early copies. The gap between the date of the events and our first copies is much shorter than any historical dark document. There's just no question. And the amount of manuscripts we have, we're talking 6,000 or so New Testament manuscripts. They're not all complete. No one in, in the field claims that. But when you look at that, there's nothing like that. So. If people want to say, oh, and this is just even almost taking the supernatural out of it for just a second now. Obviously, that's not what I would do. I believe God is preserving his word. But if you want to roll that way, if you want to say that about the New Testament, well, we don't really know what he said. And, you know, it's too. Well, then that would destroy all semblance of historical knowledge about anything because the data for the New Testament is so much closer, so much more accurate, so much more readily available when it, when you're talking about physical paper, and I'm using paper loosely, things that you write on, that there's really nothing that compares to it in the New Testament. So you're saying we don't know. I don't think we have good reason to have those kinds of doubts when we have very early manuscripts earlier than anything else and more copies than anything else. And the reason why more copies is important, Sonetta, is because it gives you the ability to cross-check. So we're able to say, okay, what about this one, this one? Because the fact is these were written by hand. Once something's written by hand, people make copying mistakes. That's just a known fact. Can't get away from that. So textual criticism compares these copies and gets into So let me ask you, you don't believe that the Bible have been tampered with? You believe that the Bible is absolutely the word of God from Genesis all the way through Revelations, that there is absolutely no flaw in God's word? And what God actually said, no. Now, just hmm. when, right before you asked your question, you said, uh, what I was talking about is manuscripts being copied. Right. There are there are there are always mistakes in manuscripts because they're written by hand. People are the ones who are copying these. And I'm not I'm not, I'm not talking about composing or writing at this point. I'm talking about copying. Until the right. invention of the printing press, it's a physical person with some writing utensil, literally writing on vellum or papyri, usually in the New Testament case, and they make mistakes, and that's why we compare. So that's true. Has there been purposeful tampering sometimes? Yes, but here's the thing, Sonetta. We know where it is. The reason why we know is because it's always a minority, meaning you'll have this, uh, this manuscript over here that has something odd in it, but if it's one manuscript... And you have the bulk of the witnesses, that's another name for the manuscripts because they witness to the text. The bulk of witnesses saying something else, there's no reason we would go with the one. Uh, and sometimes they're very minor. For example, there's something called Codex Beza. Beza, uh, it's, em it's an embellished manuscript, meaning it has basic essence in the New Testament in it, but it has these additional commentary, like how many steps were on this uh, staircase that Jesus went up to or something like that. But it's Bayes is the only one where this, the number of steps is listed. Clearly, that's someone inserting some kind of commentary. And Bayes is, way la Bayes is later, though. So we don't say, oh, the original manuscript must have named the number of steps on the stairs. Well, no, why would we think that's one manuscript? So there are things like that. And if you study, you can't deny it. But what I'm talking about is what was originally written and composed. If God cannot lie, Sonetta, then if the Bible is his word, then it cannot have error. And if God is in charge, if God is in charge, I don't see how we could say he's going to let his word be so corrupted beyond recognition that we wouldn't know what was in it. 
what would now, be the point of giving it to us if he's not going to preserve it? Now, hold on, vocab, because we're going to get to yours, what you got to say. You said, if God does not lie, start Mm-hmm. So what you're saying is God does not lie. But what if God condoned lying? See, I see if you flipping condone, your screen. Hold on. <laughs> if, know. <laughs> if he condones lying, yeah. isn't that the same thing? No, God can uh, send a lying spirit in the mouth of false prophets. He can send delusions. Yes, just like most of the people on your on your show. That would be an example of that. He can send and, lying spirits. Yes, it's part of judgment. So, so isn't that lying? lying no, it's, part of, it's part of judgment to be. Oh, to come be, on, to be okay. led. It's lying, That's man. What the Bible <laughs> says to have to be led by deceivers is part of your judgment for embracing wickedness. And once you're so far gone. God gives you over to your to to your own ways, and that can include demonic leading into lies and falsehoods. And I believe that's what goes on with a lot of your comedic friends and a lot of these Hebrew Israelites. So you saying God got to trick people to get them to punish no. them because God sent no. lions? Hold up, hold up, listen. Sure, sure. He sends lion spirits. He sends spirits of delusion. Yes. Right. That that's if what the Bible that's, says. that's what in the says. people. If that's not lying and tricking the people to beat them, then what are you saying? Um, vocab that's Pardon. still lying. You can put I, it any way you want. So I understand what you're saying, but what I'm saying is this God has multiple ways He judges people for their wickedness, right? So He's a righteous judge. One of the ways is by allowing them to embrace deception and even, uh, and, and even I, I'm a remember, I'm, I'm reformed, so I believe everything is ordained. God is. The, is is ultimately responsible for this. So every false prophet you had on your show, ultimately God <laughs> ordained that. <laughs> ultimately, He ordained that. Ultimately, but it's all part of His plan. Now I don't know everything what God's plan is, but I do know deception is one of the ways that God allows people to be dis, uh, to be judged. It's not God lying though. If God says something, Sonetta, if He says something, you can bank on it. But that doesn't mean God won't send a lying false prophet for people with a wicked heart to want to believe it. For example, some of these Hebrew Israelites you've interviewed, they want to rape a little girl. God's going to send them a false prophet, and they will believe that lie that deception and think that's what they're going to do in the kingdom of god is rape uh girls who barely hit puberty now some of them believe that and that's part of their judgment now i pray they get broken out of that but i don't know who's going to get broken out and who's going to get judged with lies now so, if god can send a lying spirit because god is the omnipresent omniscient all of that right he's yeah. good why yeah. not god send the spirit of morality over a person. Because if God can only get you with lies and delusions, when is he going to send good things? Like, where is the spirit of morality? Where is the I'm spirit here, of being truthful? No, listen to me. Why didn't God send down a spirit of morality and truthful so a person could be good? He Why did, send down the spirit did. of wickedness and, and stuff like that? He did, and his name is Jesus, and we killed him. Okay. You're, you're good, vocab. You're pretty good at this, man. So is it all right for me to bring in Apostle? Sure. All right. Let me bring on Apostle. Apostle, you on the call? What's going on, my brother? What's happening with you? Um, We heard some of vocab spill, and uh, vocab believed that this Bible is pure, 100% pure, no flaws in it, no mistakes in it, from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, what is your take on what you just heard from him and the Passover from IUIC, brother? Hey, man, thanks, man. Uh, much, much uh, appreciation for allowing me on the platform. Thanks, uh, Vocab. Appreciate yes, you very much. Let me first say, Kal Halal, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Rakatha. Uh, may all of our sins be forgiven, Salaki, in this hour. Um, if if you want to see man worship. You can just about see it everywhere, anywhere and everywhere, from Christendom to 
uh, Confucian to Buddhism is all out there. In Christianity, they took the preacher and put him in the chair and called him a king and paraded him around the church. And a year later, he was dead from AIDS because of his homosexual practices. You had all Christendom three years ago praying for the angels to come from Africa. And these were white folk to save President Trump's presidency that was being stolen from him. Uh, you had all the prophets prophesize on TV, prophesying how the election was stolen from Donald Trump and how God is going to intervene. Of course, it never happened. But it didn't stop them from doing it. Unfortunately, I didn't see vocab making no editorials about it. Uh, this ain't the first time, from my understanding, within Hebrew cosmology that certain members didn't esteem themselves as high authorities uh, before. I mean, they was calling themselves comforter, Moses reincarnated, and all that kind of stuff. We know a lot of strange things goes on because man is caught up in his flesh. Just the other day, on one of the channels, he had a guy introducing himself as Christ Michael Jesus. And he stretched his eyes and he said, no, I'm Jesus. Christ Michael, I am he. And he claimed to be Jesus, except he don't know his real name. Why would I claim a name that's only 300 years old. If I'm going to claim to be the son of God, I'm going to at least use his rightful name because his name, according to scripture, the son of God, his name has power. There's no other name given among men that is greater than the name of the son of God. So seeing to me, you would want to use the right one, at least not one that was invented 300 years ago. I mean, this is the new, I mean, the 1611 King James Bible. And that word is not in this book. Because when this book was printed, there was no such thing of a word or name called Jesus. It didn't exist. So what they used was a translation of the tithe from Greek to Latin. And they came up with Esus. Esa, even King James himself. His name is Eames, I-E-M, I-Ames, not James, Eames is how you pronounce his name in English of that day and time. Not James, there's no J letter. So let's not fool ourselves. Why are we calling on names that we know are inappropriate? That's why Israel today is divided. Some can't accept the New Testament because of his writings. There's many debates about that. Old versus new. Perhaps vocab 
needs to read this book. Because see, this book was written before there was a Bible. Oh, the Codex Sinaiticus? This book was written before there was a Bible. Sinaiticus is the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, uh oh. What is? I mean, Why the hell up, um... is it the Bible and it's not complete? It's not well, it's the not... Bible. You can literally it go to claim to be a Bible. The Sinaiticus, the Vaticus, or the Epli the uh uh uh, ep uh the uh I the A P P F. None of yeah, them the, claim the to be a complete Bible. The, the Sinaiticus the is books, the oldest. So, no, the Vaticus is the oldest. But some of the books are written in here. Yeah. Not all. Some of them are. No, it's not well, you can go, Old Testament. In so book. you can go to code. It's C-O-D-E-X S-I-N A-I-T-I-C-U-S Codex Sinaiticus. You know, you can go to it. Why well, I need to go to it and I got it in my hand. Well, because you can actually see everything right there in high res images and i'm talking about everybody else i guess if you're saying you have it but you can you can see it right there and, and look at individual i got uh -huh. two copies of it because i thought i lost it yeah so it's the old testament is in greek in 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 the sinaiticus and of well, course the new books? testament how, how many books well they have the well, in what? What are you saying? How many books are included of the Old Testament are included in here? Well, they in in Sinaiticus they include uh, fourth and f first and fourth Maccabees, wisdom, Sirach. So there's actually extra books in Sinaiticus, but Sinaiticus is, is, is complete to not in this book or not. I believe so. I think no, some of Genesis might wrong. be missing. You are wrong. Well, you let me no, no. I said I believe so. Let me. I okay, mean, this is just. But you're wrong. I'm not really. Hold on, hold on. I'm not debating you about this point. I'm. I'm looking up the contents right now. I'm not. I'm not yeah, saying I okay. know every uh, content, but I know what Sinaiticus is. I know what Sinaiticus is. But here, I'm gonna. I'm. We're, let's look it up. But I'm just. I'm trying. Uh, I'm trying to understand what your um, contention already, or point got, is. I'm I not got, really. I don't understand. You. You. You try. I already read through it. So I mean, it's marked up. And let me read this to you. You know, on the back of a book, it explains what it is, right? Huh? On the back of a book, it it explains what it is, right? If you want to know what's in a book, you go to the back and you read it. <laughs> Correct? Well, usually it's in the front table of contents, but you're talking about the back of the back blurb. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. It says this work has been selected by scholars as being culturally important and is part of the knowledge-based civilization as we know it. This work was reproduced from the original artifact. This work is reproduced from the original artifact. When I read this, I had a guy on Unbiased Sports say, of course that's not. The, the, the Sinaiticus is so large. The Sinaiticus was handwritten. This is a printed copy. But yeah. everything in the original is in here. All right. Hey, Apostle, allow Vocab to respond now. All right, let's let me finish. Then, All right. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish. finish reading. And it says this work was reproduced from the original artifact and remains as true to the original work as possible. That's all they can say because they can't even say this is inherent. 100% correct. And this is before the Bible. Well, what, what do you mean before the Bible? You're holding Shriner's work, aren't you? Isn't that Shriner's collation? Right. Yeah. Well, Shriner, he's like a, he's like, he's Shriner is, is, I mean, if you look up the date, this is post 1550 Stephanus's text. 
right, 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 right. This came printed after the printed press. Yeah, so it can't but be before everything the Bible. Everything that's in the original is still in here. You're, but yeah. but here's the thing, yeah. Sinaiticus, yeah. the contents in Genesis, it's fragments of Genesis, because what happens with these old books and codex means book basically, oh. the front part and sometimes the back part they get worn sir. away from use. Sir, and so sir, that doesn't sir. have it complete. But it's a great, it's a great uh, uh, manuscript. Every they don't have a complete nothing. Everything they have, even from the original, is fragmented. Everything. Oh, yeah. So, most um, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. So, um, vocab. This yeah. is what I was saying earlier, where Apostle teaches that the Bible, the King James Version of the Bible, is not the complete Word of God because it's been tampered with. Let's start there. That's what you said you would talk to them about. because it's been tampered with. Seems also, when they found even the Dead Sea Scrolls, these things are so fragmented. They just added work. They added information. Who, wait, who's they? Editors of Bibles. It says it. Any well, I mean, I'm just you go to. Pick up anyone. Listen, let me stop yelling. Pick up any Bible Please. you want. Go to the first page of the Bible. I mean, they tell you what it is, man. Go to the front page. It's called the preface. Zaquan, nobody thinks the English translation no, no, is the original. No, I'm, not even, is the I'm original. not even talking. Listen, bro. Let me finish. Go to the prefix right here. The preface. What this yeah. does, what this does and, and how many people, I bet you you never read it. How many people? Read what? The, the front I've read the preface of, it, of every Bible I have. Oh, you read it? I don't, I don't know, know what, what editor, you have in your hand there, but when I get a Bible, I editor, always read the preface. And you don't know that the editor has added? Well, what do you mean? When you say editor, do you mean the translators? Or what do you mean the editor? The well, editor right of, now, I'm not even talking trans. Understand, this book was translated years yeah, ago. Yeah, I know. But yeah. this book was formulated in 1976. Of the well, Thomas not the, the Old Testament wasn't, but if you mean that thing you're holding there, I'm sure maybe it was printed in 1976. Yeah. I'm just saying, Saquon, I'm not even really arguing with you. I don't fully know what you're trying to get at. Some of what you're saying you're is a little listening. imprecise. Maybe, maybe you just need to listen. Well, the thing is, though, you're you're acting as if you're making some kind of clear point, but you're not. Are oh, you no. saying... And, and sometimes you're saying speaking in vagaries. So when you say they've tampered with the Bible... That's vague and generic. No one knows what you're saying. You if you're saying the King say James Version translation has mistakes, that's true. When did you hear me say they tampered with the Bible? That's what Sonetta was saying you're saying. It seemed like you, you were saying say, it too. You didn't hear me say that, right? So he's in All you got to do is ask him. Ask him vocab. Was, it, was the Bible translated by, you know, corrupt people? See, Does you're that? going off of formal information that you think you understand about me. That perhaps maybe Sean never shared with you. So, so what I'm saying, you have an opportunity right now to hear straight out of my mouth, but you want to interrupt me. So you will never get a full, clear picture of what I'm saying unless you listen to me. Okay, I, I don't get. I'm, tr I'm trying. I'm trying to understand the, the understand. main point. When I'm trying I know to the Bible. Is, I know the Bible. We we know the Bible's been translated. So, and we know that manuscripts have mistakes because people copy them. If if you heard before you came on the program in the beginning, that's literally what I was talking about. You know what I'm well, saying? How can you say stuff. then that the Holy Bible, not one particular one, just what they prefer to as the Holy Bible? Okay is 100% accurate. How can you make that statement when you when know we refer, mistakes? When, when we refer cuz when I refer to that accuracy, yeah. when I think about things being accurate, that means without blemish, without spot, 
like my Masia. He's without blemish. How do you know that? Because the scripture says he's, says he's without so blemish. So the scriptures tell you about Jesus. Right. Well, how do you know the scriptures haven't been tampered with? What scriptures? That particular scripture? That's See, what I'm saying. Right. If you start saying the Bible yeah, has error in it. You, if I got to school you on that, put it this way. No, you're, you're missing what, what I'm saying. Lesson, what is the lesson in this? Christ and his disciples were walking into Jerusalem. Christ saw a tree. Did he not see a tree? That was the the fig tree that he cursed, yeah. Okay. Out of, did he think or did he speak words out of his mouth? Spoke words out of his mouth. And what are was you talking those about? Words? Oh, you're talking about the difference between the synoptics? Is that what you're talking about? Sir, see, there you go. Listen. I'm just trying to ask you what you're saying. I don't know why that's offensive. How do you know God's word is true, brother? How do we know God's word is true? Well, yeah, we have lots you know? of we have lots of reasons. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit confirms its testimony that's the only to the person. Testimony we have. That's ultimately. However, we have to do our due diligence in and, the, and in what? the. And what? And in lots of fields, because we don't want to deceive ourselves. Right. We don't want to deceive ourselves. So, and so we, we have to, we so do follow do we up do? work. What we do, do we follow do? up work in the areas of history, archaeology, geography, science, logic, practicality, morality, textual criticism, things I'll, like I, that. Listen, outside that, because you, you're dealing with too many men for me. I, I'm not concerned. With nothing but scripture. That's all I'm concerned about. So what does scripture say? What does the book say in the scriptures? Testifying about God's word. What does it say in 2 Timothy? What does it say? That it's that it's everything you need for every good work to make it the 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 complete. It's for for, scripture is what? For righteousness, God breathed, Theanustas. Right. All, yeah, and in Second Peter, what it says: Holy men of old moved; they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Do you to believe write. that? Yes. I, I, I so now, so now, I don't, there's the no New debate Testament, about that for me. So now, let's go there. If the New Testament is the fulfillment of the old, then yeah. the New Testament has to bear record of what the old says. Correct. Well, it confirms the old, but it doesn't need to repeat the old because we already have the old. No, no, no. Listen, to, follow my direction. It can't disagree with the old. No, it can't, but it doesn't. All right, so now, Torah. What is Torah? Law. Law. What are the books of the law? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Number, Deuteronomy. All right. Can the writings and the Psalms and the prophets disagree with the Torah? No. And they all speak of Jesus, like he said at the end of Luke. So, one thing we have established, what is written in the law, the prophets, the Psalms, and the writings have to be in agreement with. Well, they all have to be in agreement with each other, ultimately. They have to agree with the law. Yes, but right, Jesus, now, is, the, let me Jesus go. is the ultimate interpreter of the law. Okay, let me go. So in the New Testament, if it's saying something different than the Old Testament said, am I to take what the New Testament say, or am I to miss what the New Testament is saying? Oh, the New Testament has primacy over the Old. If that I think maybe that's what you're trying to get at, because Jesus is explaining so exactly Testament, what it means. If, I'll give okay, you. If the I'll New give you Testament, an example. If the New sure. Testament has primacy over yeah. the old, how can the old be the foundation? Because it sets up what's to come later. Who is Jesus Christ? Remember Deuteronomy twenty, Deuteronomy eighteen. Deuteronomy eighteen says, "Hey, be a prophet like unto me. He's going to come. He's going to da da da." That's Jesus, right? So that's what he's supposed to do. So Jesus is the ultimate interpreter of Scripture, 
and the one that we look to, and he fulfills things. So that's why certain things we don't have to do anymore. So, like, Did for example, Christ quote the Old Testament? Yes, he quoted the Old Testament. He's the author of the Old Testament, ultimately. Right. Theologically so speaking. In John, in John, when he went into the synagogue, and he, uh -huh. or is it in Mark? And he quoted from the Old Testament. Luke about 4. Isaiah. Talking about Luke 4. Yeah. Luke, and, he quoted, Luke 4. and he quoted from he quoted Isaiah 61. Right. 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 Uh-huh. Did he quote this scripture is fulfilled today in your hearing? He says, this "Right, scripture is fulfilled." So tell me, yeah. okay, okay, y'all, all right, man. Let's bring in some other people. Yeah. Um, do you have a question for him, Apostle? Or before we move on, I don't. I can't see how he can get to the conclusion because basically he agrees with me. I agree but with you in a lot. Reason, I'm not sure what. And some yeah. reason he's afraid, and I find this with most believers. They are afraid for whatever reason to speak against a book they right. give there a you book, go they I'm give a you, book Pac more Pac precedence i'm with you on that, to the god of the book right they worship <laughs> the book rather than the god oh whoa now you're going in, Apostle. See, I'm with you all the way. Hey. Um, I agree with Apostle on this one, though, man. Hey, Congratulations. To you they even got to, to agree they with got you. to agree because it's only truth. Even the yeah. devil didn't tell Eve a direct lie. He gave us some truth. Yeah, he did. Oh, hold, hold up. Stop. He gave her some truth. Hold up. God with damn it. Stop, man. Hold up, Apostle. I've we been saying this. this. Find truth. Oh, hold up, Apostle. Hold up. Hold up. We've been saying this all the time that the devil didn't lie. That the Why devil gave him lie. No, I know, I know, Apostle. Just let me finish. You lied. But, but you no, never, no. but Apostle, check this out. You coming around in the most high. And there's a scripture in the Bible where the most high, I'm paraphrasing it, where the most high said, every tongue. Every tongue will speak on, on truth. Every tongue where the most high is putting the spirit. Right, there you go. The most high is putting that spirit in you right now, Apostle. Now I believe in the most high now, Apostle. I'm starting to believe it now, brother. Because look at what you just said. You said even the devil told Eve some truth. What is that truth that the devil told her? He told her some truth. It was a deception. Thou shalt not surely die, but God does know in the day that thou eat, thou shalt become as God. Mm, mm, that's mm. true. Well, that's a that's a start. I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna that's press it too hard, but, but, but that's but a start. He lied when he said, Thou shalt not surely die. <laughs> that's so he not, God damn it. See, that's the point of a deceiver. Uh -huh. A deceiver doesn't come outright lying. They give you a little truth so they can pinch you with the lie. Often in truth is often stirred up in a cesspool of lies to do what? To deceive you from the truth. Mm. Damn. Apostle getting ready to convert my ass in a minute. He's, he's about to do what Tazariak and them couldn't do for years, man. He coming to that? Convert you to what? They Believe they the Bible's corrupt and the devil's speaking truth? <laughs> they, they, look here. The problem is they got a bunch of guys they take off the street and they teach them the letter of the law, but they don't teach about the spirit. And you can't have one without the other because only the spirit of truth can lead you to truth. Only the spirit of truth. Me. And the Bible I, says, I brethren, test every spirit, for not all spirits are of the same. But test the spirit by the spirit to see rather it is of God. Because the go. devil is out to deceive. There Only you go. the Holy Spirit can convict any man of God's word and what is God's word only and only the Holy Spirit. I think everybody should tune in 
Everybody should tune in on Sunday. Apostle will have his own show, and he's going to break all of this down for everybody to see what he mean when he talk about that this book have been translated by the white man, and Apostle do call the white man the devil. Not all white men. I'm going to quote my brother right. He says, not all white men, but the white man that translated this book, the devil. So that's my brother Apostle. I'm starting to be converted by this brother. I've, I've been too busy screaming on him, and all this time, he's been dropping some truth, man. I got to fall back and really listen to him. I gotta go in a second here. You got someone you want to bring on, but I gotta take off. Okay, let me see. Um, it's been a minute. And, and you know, Apostle used to be a reverend. You know that, right? He used to be a reverend. I know before he's a good he became an Israelite. He's a good harmonica player. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here's another reverend. He is a reverend right now, a minister, and I bring him in. Amin Ra McCarthy is in the building. Armin Rob McCarthy, he got on his collar. What's going on, brother? What's up? Uh, uh, peace to the panel. I, I would just come on. I've been on for a while, but I was coming on just to say, uh, you know how you were saying about man worship. I agree. I don't. I don't agree. Your, your mic is messed worship, up a little bit, brother. But Armin Rob, your mic is messed up. Okay, hold on. Hear me now. Yeah, but it's like you, jump, right? you might have to go out and come back in. If we heard you. You're just a little pitchy, choppy. Yeah, you're choppy. Can you hear me? Can you hear me back? You still no, choppy. no. Go out and come back in. Go just jump off and jump back in. Hey, uh, don't go nowhere, bro. Okay, it'll be it'll the, take. I I do that. Those yeah. other clips, I okayed you to be able to play them. By the way, okay. You know, son, at a, All right, might, might have to play them. I try to take off or something. Yeah, I got you. Um, let me get the um the minister in here and then I can go to D after D. So Vocab, you know. I still would love to have a bill with you, brother. Sure. Okay. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, Apostle. Um and Rod, let's get it in. I see you winding up. You winding up. You probably in a uh, um bad location. Yeah. I, I just want people okay, to know. We hear you. We hear you. So Khan and I did debate before. There's a debate we did on the channel. What's up, Armin Ra? Oh, oh, yeah, I was just saying. Yeah, before. I dusted you, man. But before I go out, I dusted again. you silly. <clears throat> okay. You look like Simple Simon, man. <laughs> All right, hold on, y'all. Armin Ra is on the panel. Hello, He's man. In. Much love. Much love. Much. We, we gotta make be fair and balanced on all on all sides, like. Uh, if we're going to talk about General Johanna as being a man worship in, 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 in place of Christ, we also have to do the same thing with the Pope. That's why I don't follow uh, uh, Catholic Catholicism because the Pope is considered to be Christ on earth or the, or the, the Christ is vice gerent on earth. The vicar of Christ, they call him, yeah. yeah. Yeah, vicar of Christ, which that's absolute nonsense BS because no man can hold that title. Plus, it's not even in the scripture. Nowhere, nowhere in the scripture is anyone the bystander for Christ. In no, in no religion, nowhere in the scripture where they say this person is going to be the by person or the vice, the vice gerent to Christ. So that's Amen. that's just it's false. Either it's, yeah. uh, either in the in the uh, in the ISUPK's course or in the Catholic Church. Either one, we have to call it for what it is. It's straight out of hell. That is straight out of hell, thinking that anybody can stand in the place of Christ. So, like I said, I, and I'm a Christian, but I don't follow Catholic beliefs because that they they thought they worship that they worship Mary and genuflect and bow to a statue of Mary. You don't worship He Mary did. The Pope will die. These are things that we have to get away from if you follow the Spirit, because the Spirit never dies. That's all I have. Yeah, well, I, I'm, that's why I'm a Protestant, you know, is to get away from that stuff. So we wouldn't disagree about that, you know what I mean? Uh, even calling the Pope means Papa. You know, I wouldn't, I, that's not an appropriate term for him. Like, he's the father of the church or something, you know? There's a lot of uh, a lot of baggage that comes along with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, peace out. Can I hear you, sir? 
All right, D, what's happening, man? It's on you. What's going on, sir? What's going on, vocab? Peace to the family. Hey, peace. Hey, hey, peace, uh, peace, uh, apostle, too, man. Peace to apostle. Um, so I have like a, a multi part question. It's gonna be a little interesting because I've been watching the uh, the podcast pretty much all day. Um, and in the beginning of the podcast, you were talking about um, how the Hebrews believe that they're going to have you know, the little girls after puberty or somewhat like that in heaven. Do y'all remember that? No, just GMS. That's only one right. camp, only one camp right. I know of. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So here we go, Post. All right. So you are a believer of Jesus Christ, correct? I follow Jesus Christ, yes. Yes. So does that make you a believer? Yes or no? Yeah, I'm a believer, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. So you do believe in heaven as well, correct? I believe in heaven, yes. Okay. And you believe in us having a spirit, correct? Yeah, I believe we'll, be have, we'll have renewed bodies, though, in our permanent state. Yeah, but spirit as well, yes. We'll have renewed bodies. Can resurrected. You yeah. Resurrected bodies. Okay, cool. So um, this is where I'm going to go with this. Sure. So... Uh, and you know brother apostle do we not like have to deal with engaging with chemicals when we have to go to the doctor and we like if ever there's something wrong with that they they give us pills and stuff like that to deal with chemicals inside of our body to alter things when we sick we deal with things that that alter our chemicals in the body you take medicine and it's supposed to do something to you inside of your physical body correct huh okay so this is a part of the question when it comes to your loved ones your wives you know etc will you have a wife and you know with the objective of your wife to go to heaven with you for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of god in heaven so no you won't have you won't there won't be marriage in heaven there won't be no marriage in heaven okay according cool. to matthew twenty two thirty one. 31 yeah or twenty two thirty. i'm sorry okay cool so surrounding around the idea of the gfs or whatever what would be the point of dealing with something that's anthropomorphized when you go to heaven when you're dealing with the body we're talking about chemicals pheromones all these things that you deal with in the human form so are we saying that we're going to take this body this fleshly body and go somewhere where the whole objective was to get out of this thing and you have a spirit are we saying that we're taking a fleshly thing to heaven where you have a spirit you're going to be dealing with uh chemicals like gold molecules substances that have right. something to do with these things so in a Greek, in an old Greek mindset, you know, they're influenced by Plato. They wanted to escape the body and just uh, be spiritual, enlightened beings. But Hebrews never thought that way. And the New Testament is still, even though it's written in Greek, it's still Hebrew in its mindset. So in there, we're not trying to get out of the body. It's that God is going to make creation renewed to where it can last forever, unlike now. So your question is a great question, but it's answered, I think, in 1 Corinthians 15, 50. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So there's going to be some kind of transformation of our bodies. And then in verse 53, it says, this perishable body must put on the imperishable this mortal body must put on immortality when the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on the immortality then it shall come to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory death where is your victory death where is your sting so we're not trying to get away from our physical bodies in christianity we're going to have a resurrected renewed glorified body it is physical but it's different than our body now now how exactly i don't know d the bible doesn't give the details of that it just says that it's not 
the same corruptible flesh we have now because otherwise it would just die again so in some way it's glor it's glorified to where it's able to last forever there's no more death there won't be sickness so we won't need to take pills and all that stuff but we're not trying to get out of our bodies in christianity in fact if you're away from your body you're kind of an incomplete person in a hebrew mindset where body and soul dichotomous creatures both elements make us who we are we're physical we're also spiritual we're both but this body can't oh, last forever. Yeah. That's why it's got to be renewed. Does that oh. does that make sense? Is that what you're asking? I'm not trying to like dominate. If uh, is that what you were asking? Well, um, the Bible does give us an insight. All right. Hey, about. hold up, Apostle. Hold on, Apostle, because I'm going to go to the next man right quick. All right. Okay. I, just want, I didn't, I didn't want to get away from that. What, what vocab just said? He was the Bible me. does give us. Go insight. ahead, Because I'm moving on to the next man. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you. I thought you muted me. But yeah. Um. So yeah. That that was one part of the question, and uh, you know, just a major second part of the question was why does the Bible anthropomorphize things so much? You're made into the image of God, but then in regards to seeing God, no man can see His face. We're made into the image and the likeness of Him, but the objective is to get out of that. So no, why is anthropomorphizing? Yeah, why is anthropomorphism so big in the scriptures? Well, I mean, there are examples of anthropomorphism in scripture, but remember, the goal of Christianity is not to get out of our bodies. That's that's a Greek idea. That's a Platonic idea. We want to retain our bodies. It's just this body can't last forever. When I say we want to, what I'm saying is that's what God tells us will happen. Uh, even in the Old Testament, there's hints of resurrection in Daniel 12 and some other places, but we're going to be in a body that's forever. And it's not going to happen, though, till the Lord comes yeah. back, because in First John it says, when we see him, we'll be like he is. So there's going to be some kind of transformation to where this perishable body that I have now by God's grace, will be turned imperishable, meaning it won't be able to be killed or vanquished, will last forever. And that's the promise of every Christian. So, you know, you, you're going to get older, you're going to pass away. As a Christian, the Bible's guarantee to you is, you're not, you're not only your sins paid for, you'll have a body that lasts forever, and you can enjoy God's presence in a place where you never have to worry about dying again. See, so we're not see, trying to it, get away from it. Peace for call, you got the floor, brother. He's muted. He's muted, though. Yeah, there we go. I want to share my screen real quick. First of all, Shalom, sign that. I've been watching your channel for a all while. All right. Peace, brother. I appreciate you. But uh, vocab alone ain't about to be a brother. Um, I just want to share that first and foremost. This is what vocab alone does. All right. Let me get this shared real quick. You see this image on my screen? on the upper right hand side. Yeah, we talking about the Nation of Islam member? Yeah, I'm talking about the Nation of Islam member that's not actually a Nation of Islam member. It's that's somebody that is dressed up so that y'all can make fun of people. Vocab's not a brother. What he does is he's a leech. He called me. He called me a leech the other day when his entire channel is comprised of uh, trying to break down Israelites and what they stand for. And his real problem is that he don't want a black man on top. Now, while some of the imagery we saw was very fictional and brothers and sisters got to be very careful about what they exalt and what they worship. We also got to understand that a big part of culture is entertainment. A lot of people learn through that. We need strong black imagery in the community. So while, yeah, we got to tread very carefully when we deal with how we look at that imagery is a brother losing the lines between fact and fiction or not. We also got to look at the fact that this brother likes to wear G.I. Joe T-shirts. He likes superheroes. The problem is when it's time to look at black superheroes, he feel like it's time to stand up. He calls himself an urban apologist, a street apologist, and he wants to talk about people who believe in idolatry. He carries around idols of John Calvin. He got little John Calvin action figures. So no, Martin it's Luther. It's Martin Luther. It's not John Calvin. Martin Luther? Oh, thank you for correcting me. That's idolatry. But I, do, well. I, I am if looking you, for a John Calvin. The rare form of it. But, but what I wanted to say was vocab's real issue is that the Israelites teach that the people that took them into slavery is going to go into slavery. 
right? That's what uh, we teach. And we teach that there's a way for us to treat each other that's way better than the death culture that we've promoted, that we see on the corner to and fro. And while we may disagree, Son Netter, Kemet versus Israel, and you other brothers on the stage, I say it's a black issue. I say it's an in-house issue. All this cracker wants to do is get material and fill his church up so that he can still be I forgot. You said, it's a, you said it's a black issue. What about yes, those Hispanic brothers issue. in your camp? It's, 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 it's a forgot. black issue. It's what about those Hispanic brothers in your camp? In the house, right? What about those Hispanic brothers? Why are you just counting them? Hold on, hold on. I didn't ask you. No, no, I don't, I don't need to hold on. You said it's a black issue. What about those Hispanic brothers in your camp? Slander. Don't you think Hispanic brothers are in Israel? I'm never on a black channel. Can I say my piece? What about why you say black issue when you got Hispanic brothers in your chart? On a black channel. What about Native Americans? Why are you leaving them out, Ashraka? I'm not leaving. Them out. Hold on, on. Hey, Rakan, 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 hold on. This is his show. But if you would like to come on and do a show, you can. You're welcome. Yes, but so, this is vocab let me show, you show right everybody. Now. Let me show you what these guys so like Africa do. Here's what I want to ask him a question. When it's convenient to, for them, it becomes a black issue. But then if you say black Hebrew Israelites, they get all upset and say, well, don't forget about the Hispanics and the Native brothers. Okay, I'm remembering them. So you don't get to make it a black issue when you yourself have told me on my program, Lord willing, you're going to whip the slaves of Hamites in the kingdom. You want to own black slaves. Don't talk to me about a black man being on top. You want a black man on bottom. You think Joe, Judas gets to have black slaves. Why so do you call us you black, black Hebrew so Israelites you don't get to cheat with the main thing that stands out Hispanics ain't black. Americans. Hold on, one at a time. I'm going to let you speak, Ricardo. I'm going to let you speak. What's up? Yeah, so I'm just saying you can't say it's a black issue when you got black and brown together. So you, will you leave them out now? You see, this is the this is the, the trickery you guys do. Watch but this. it's all a lie. All right. Do you Ricardo. not have Hispanic brothers in your camp? Yep. Are they black? Black and Hispanic. You just said black and Hispanic. Yeah. So, I said, so yeah. So what I said so why was, you say we're it's talking only about black, issue black issues on Sonetter's channel. You said black Hebrew Israelites. If it was, I did not was say problem, that. I, I haven't said that once. Hey, I don't show chat, until Did he just, just bring up black Hebrew Israelites? Just now, I said the it. Chat, the whole show, I have not said that. And I, I didn't because I'm making saying, my point. I didn't finish but, making but, my point. But see, oh. you're, you're all you're doing is lying and going on and on and no, on. No, no, but I'm you not can't lying. answer the question. I'm not lying. You can't answer the question though. I ask, I know? answered the question. Ask it again, and I'll answer it again. Do I have blacks and Hispanics black, in my camp? Yes. Okay. 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 So, do the, do the issues relating to Israel affect them? Yes. Okay. So then, how is it just a black issue? I'm talking about on Sonetter's channel, right? Sonetter's concern is what's going on with black people. Am I right or am I wrong? I don't know. Right. I can hey, real about quick, real quick, um, real quick. Hold up. Let me answer this Nimkin poop. He says, Sarnetta, really? I remember when you had people like Vocab Malone kissing your feet. Yes, I did. <laughs> but now I got niggas that look like me tearing my ass down. So I no longer deal with the black and white issue. I got to deal with the issue that exists within my home. With the with the man that looked like me is the one that's trying to tear me down, stab me in the back, and kill me. That's who I'm looking at. See, I'm not dealing with that black and white issue no more. You had Sarnetta at one time riding with y'all and riding with black people. But when I get on YouTube and do my work, it's, it's Negroes that try to tear me down. So I'm no longer gonna have people like vocab kissing my feet. I've been stopped doing that when I seen people like you and like me try to try to tear me down and kill me. So I'm not with all that nonsense no more. You can't fool me now. You see what I'm saying? You had me at one time and you lost me. So I'm not with all that riding with the black, all black, all black. It's the same one that will stick a knife in your back. You see, I understand the nature of the white man, but I also understand the nature of a black man as well. That makes it even worse because he looked like you. So don't give me that. I'm not with none of that. You can't pull that over on me today. So I ain't with none of that. Vocab respect me. I respect vocab. Simple as that. If if a Chinese man show me respect, I'm gonna show his ass respect. Just like that. You see? So I'm supposed to respect and love black people who trying to put my ass in the box? No, it don't work like that no more, man. Nah, hell no. 
Well, so, man, you, once when you become a Christian, son, that you will have to still love them because Jesus says, "Love your enemies." Yeah, I don't, that's why I probably never be a Christian. Brother. <laughs> oh, brother Sonetta, is it okay if I uh, finish addressing vocab? Yeah, finish. You can speak. See, I don't mind if you bring the smoke. I don't I care. Mean, I just, I just don't want to yeah. overspeak you on. As far as I'm yeah, concerned, yeah, 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 brother, brother, you can speak. You can speak. So the other day, vocab Malone went as far as to slander me. You know, what I do is I have dialogues with Christian platforms, right? Except, like, you know what I'm saying, when I when I do it, I don't do it in a respectful way when it comes to vocab. Um, I'll confess to taking his material and just exposing him as a liar and somebody who's constantly contradicting themselves. But I went on a Christian show the other day, and vocab came on there and slandered me. And so what happened was he caused the ambush on that show where he was able to ask me questions and not wait for an answer to come out because like he did with brother apostle zaquan is he's always trying to posture himself as the black man's intellectual superior ain't that right vocab when it was a learning opportunity you had to you had to get your points in when it was really a situation where you should have been listening i saw you do it several times but what vocab doesn't like no, most no, it's is just, that we it's just, the gospel. It's just people like just, you specifically you're, point, you're vocab, ignorant and, you and you're a liar me. you specifically it's not about everybody else but you know Ashraka, since you followed me around to about what is this a fourth time fifth time you've went where i've went I no, you've come where I've come. This is I, Black I, I Power Network. This is our Instead TV. of this back and forth, well, I want to I wanna ask you to, to a formal debate with me. Forget right all now. this following me around like Mary had a run little it, land. Run it, run it right now, and we can run it about what? whether or not the Black the Hispanic debate. man, since you brought him into it, I and the Native American man and the debate. other Israelites are going to get salvation as opposed to what your gospel says, which we're supposed to forgive our enemies. Ashra Khan, now they're going to put justice you in the earth debate for the atrocities yes no? that have been done for us. Run it right now. Instead of following me around like Mary had a little lamb, will you debate me formally? Yes right or no? Now. Run it right now. I'm not. I told you. I'm not staying on for two hours to debate you right now. I got to leave. It shouldn't it take you long. Minute. I'm a high school dropout. But you could do it. I don't know what you are except a liar, but listen, will you formally debate me on another day on a on a on a neutral platform? Yes or no? Sure, sure. Okay. I'm gonna put the email in the I chat. I have some topic ideas. When I when I, when I called you I to my show the topic, other day you agree on my this wall topic? and tagged you into where you was a no. Do you agree and on this you topic? Answer to the debate? Will Israelites own black people in the kingdom? Would Israelites will that? own slaves no matter who the color and guess what? Will some of them be black? I'm, black gonna them. I'm not going to treat them the way I'm going to treat you. Some of them, will some of them be So they're going to be in a position of way higher be black. than you, you okay? Yep. All you're trying to do is some of your... emotional cords right now. Okay, but you do believe some of your slaves will be Egyptian slaves, don't you? Yep. Yep. Okay, let's do a debate. And they're going to be Will like Joseph. Israelites like own Egyptians in in the kingdom. Let's do that debate. How about that? No, nah, I'm going to call that No? Okay. Let's, if you don't want to debate that, let's debate this. Is it moral? Let's, let's, to date, lie? let's, let's debate it moral? whether or not let's there's going to be slavery Is it moral to lie and steal? The of the Israelites. How about that? Is it moral to lie and steal to people let's of a different nation? Let's debate whether or not the Israelites are going to have their enemies and slaves. No, because you're not. No, I never no, do a debate. No, that's, where, that's, where, that's what I'm debating. No, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. That's because, what I'm debating, vocab. Oh, so you don't? You only want to debate We're one We're debating topic. whether or not the Israelites are going to have their enemies okay. and slaves. Okay, I'll do in that. Kingdom. I know I'll I'm speaking that if you English do, right now. Okay, vocab. if you debate this topic first. No, is run what Ashraka, I said wrong, vocab. Can Ashraka prove he's an Israelite? Uh oh! Come on, Ashraka, you got him. You got him. Oh, yeah. Will you do no. that debate, Ashraka? Yeah, right, he doesn't have to that. prove that. He can layer it too. Oh, yeah, that'll be the debate great. topic. We're gonna layer it too. The debate okay, will be you on Israelites have their enemies and Israelite. in slavery. Now, notice Ashraka is saying he's gonna agree to the debate topic that he's gonna prove he's an Israelite. That's what we're gonna debate. Okay, cool. Uh, I got to take off. I'm glad we'll talk a bit more about that later. That's a great debate topic. Oh, you're not going you to accept the rest of the debate? Debates only have one thesis per debate. Says you. We, no, it says formal debate rules. If you want to debate the second debate, we'll do that after. I'm down Let, with that. Let's run it all but together. First, you prove guess what? what I'm going to what I'm going to say is when you stand firm into the end, that's how you know who's an Israelite for real and who's not. That's my doctrine. Uh, oh, what so I'm not going to do is fall in, what I'm not going to do is fall into your presuppositions and then box I'm myself into a corner where your logic gets to so, reign supreme over me. 
so, you're right. That's my doctor. Did you know that? So you will. Did you know that so was my doctor you, vocab? So now you won't debate. You're an Israelite. No, I know you guys all think that, but you. Oh, you know. Live, so, you live, so, so what's the debate? You stand about? on a corner, Ashraka. When you stand on a corner, you act like you're an Israelite because I've heard you. When you go when on, I stand on the corner, I say you blacks, act, so don't, don't and act Native like Americans now. are descendants of like the now. Israelite. You're and not I say sure. keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And then when they ask every Israelite, I say not everybody that comes from them places is Israelite. Because just like you I'm brought up the other you. day, you, brought, you asked you me the other day, you asked me the other day you. what Edomites existed after 70 AD. The problem with the logic is when you went and in to say you. that that's Edomites were you. exterminated prior to 70 AD, you're only talking about the Idumians that was identifying as such and not the ones that converted to being Jews. So the I'm problem glad, becomes there's people that can blame the Jews, and then there's the people who are bloodline Jews. All right, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, yeah. That's not what I asked you. I'm glad you studied a little bit since we talked last time. That's good. Keep on reading Josephus. It'll help our dis discourses. You see, you but, see how pretend but, slick this demon is? With you, okay, definitely. Uh, so with with you, because I, I know how you are. You're a slander. This is a snake <laughs> sitting next to you. And when he had a chance to have an honest dialogue with me, he turned it down. And it's on my what, channel. What? You can see it for yourself. He's a slave, Twice you came slave. on, I treated you with kindness and respect, and then you look what you did. You're duplicitous. You talk one way to me, but then when you go on your channel, you do a whole different thing. Like, like I, I said, don't duplicitous I can, like you that. can have a conversation with me in respect. Just because I can have a cordial discussion with you don't mean I agree with you. No, I, but but you, I never you'll said go you should agree with me. To lie on somebody. Okay. You'll bear false witness on somebody. You'll slander somebody. I got the proof. No, no I don't do that. I don't do that. Hey, yo, Ricardo, hold on. Let me ask a question, man. Let me ask a question, man. Yes, sir. Um, sometimes, my brothers, man, y'all got to be able to know how to debate without calling names, man. Because when people call names, that's when I feel that they've been defeated. I haven't heard vocab call you one name yet. Since y'all been going back and forth, but you called him a snake, you called him a demon, you called him, you called him all kind of stuff. And that's what I see from a lot of Israelites. Not all. Some Israelites argue with intelligence and they use that they know how to articulate and go in. You could go in on them without doing that. I would love to see that type of stuff sometime. You know what I'm saying? Use the Bible, use the use the scriptures, man. See, I, I, could beat, I could beat vocab Malone without cursing. With I go respect, into the scripture, sir. and I could beat him. With all respect, sir, you can see it on my channel. I deal with him straight up. I, I like I wasn't I wasn't in this form before, but he violated the other day. So you know, I apologize. God, definitely. I had let me tell everyone the, the, the end of the day. I'm just a young dude. Sonetta, let me tell you the, the real streets. truth. I do a I show called the Smoke Room. I watch your preferential treatment to our people, but when it comes to him, I gave him all the good energy that I had. You know, yeah, no, the real truth is so son that I do a show that, called the smoke know. room where I let anybody come into the show. He came in twice, both times. I let him speak. I make sure he had enough time. I never I never said anything. I went slow and low in the sense of just like taking it time, taking it easy, didn't cut him off, let him speak for 40 some minutes, you know, back and forth, long dialogues. Uh, was totally respectful, even though I was knew he was an Israelite and he told me, you know, he's gonna put people in slavery and all this stuff. And it's you can watch the dialogues because I didn't take him down. Then he took those programs we did and did a program where he put me in a clan outfit. So for him to act like he was respectful, it's just, but the, the thing is, Sonnet has proven the point. You guys don't have a lot in your arsenal because you get destroyed when you don't have the microphone and you can't control everything. You get destroyed because you're, you're, the, the information you put forth is inaccurate and doesn't line up with scripture very frequently. So what you do is resort to slander and name calling. And that's exactly the problem. And you won't debate me. I guarantee you'll find some reason for it to fall through. You will not debate me on if you can prove you're an Israelite. I guarantee you that debate will never happen. But I'm down for it if you do it because no Israelite is willing to stand on their square and say, I can prove I'm an Israelite because they know they can't. Because all you got was a special feeling when you watched a YouTube video and then you started to lead a camp based on that. And you can't prove that in debate. All right. I heard you. And what a Christian can't prove is that God changed his mind and made his chosen people from one people to everybody the hell else. 
especially the slave master that was cracking whips off his children. God didn't change back. his mind. You just don't know God. I know God didn't change his mind. I'm saying that's the blasphemy of the Christian he church. He didn't change his mind. You're just not reading, nah, you're not reading yeah, the Bible not, right because you don't know God. Like a white man who likes to appropriate other people's cultures. Don't talk people. about white men and black men when you want to own black slaves in the kingdom. I don't want to own any no, black no, what slaves. I, you what do. I really want is to own white slaves because they're <laughs> the only people I got up on the pick. What I said hey, was, hey, hey, God, how do you feel? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, y'all, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody, hold on. Hey, Rakar, how do you feel about Africans, man? Are they your people, brother? Some are, a lot ain't. Oh, uh, what's one? Of, what's are the people that you're going to have in slavery, sir? The ones that ain't Israelites. And who are they? The, look, like I said, we salt and pepper through the whole earth. So, so you say it's going to be black. It's going to be black color. people. But I'm hey, keep it real, Rakar. Come on, man. Because Cesar, if that's why I love the captain. The captain don't give a damn. He will come up in here and say, "Hell yeah!" He ain't gonna lie to you. He but not. I don't, he ain't I don't, gonna I don't like keep it a hundred. So what I'm saying is, if you're not an Israelite, you're not an Israelite. You're gonna be a slave in that day. For me How do you determine who is gonna be an Israelite? Because the people that left Israel during the Passover, they were mixed with the Kimites. They came out. How many I, I, people? First, let I me ask say, you. I would say you would be. I would say you. How be many people went into Israel? Rakar, Rakar, Rakar. How many people went into Israel? I don't know. How many Israelites went in? I don't know how many. Talk about seventy. But yeah, but yeah. What I was saying was. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, just, hold on, brother. And how many came out, Rakar? You talking about out of Egypt? Yes. It was in the hundreds of thousands that came out. I thought Why do you think that is, years. brother? Why do you think that is? If only 70 went in and hundreds of thousands came out, why do you think that is? Because our people multiply very proficiently. All right, so you don't think the, um, the Kemetic people was having sex with the Egyptian woman and the Hebrew men was having sex with the Kemetic woman? You don't think that they was mixing? I never said that. Right. So what I'm trying to show, show you, brother, is that that's why that many came out, because they came out as a mixed race of people. They wasn't all Israel no more. They wasn't full blooded Israel. Nah, they were there's, there's no there's no such thing as full blooded Israel. Either you're all right. Well, they were mixed. With the Egyptians, brother. That's what I'm saying. They were Talking mixed. Mixed multitude. I say you'd be hard pressed to prove they left. You see where there are some people who were not Israelites with them Israelites. When it says an innumerable multitude went up to Sakaf, you'll see that Sakaf is within the confines of Egypt. But you don't you don't see that they left and then they followed Israel everywhere. You see that Israel went on a conquest, killing a yeah, bunch of people. Yeah, you do. Hold on, because you have the story about the Israelitish, the Israelitish woman. And the I just said a few trouble. here and there. That's uh, that one see, woman with see, that one man. You don't know that you one woman there, is not a multitude, vocab. Okay? But it, there was. That's where they came out of. It literally says the mixed that, multitude. That, that's that, that's left what you call. Egypt. That's what you call making an assumption and jumping the gun. That's what I was read. Saying. It says, uh, all I, all I'm all all saying is that the mixed multitude died in the wilderness okay. following the Israelites. Hey, the hey, hey, um, hold on for a minute. Let me ask you a question, brother. Yes, sir. My father's Dominican. Am I Israelite? Yeah. How do you like? How do you know? Because Ariya had a dream. Said, hold on, said, hold on, yeah. brother, hold on. How do you said, know my I said, yeah, more than likely because of the migration that took place to that landmass. We find that the people who were taken to that landmass were of Israel. So if your father's father goes back to those people who had root were Israelites, you would be an Israelite. That's All right, said, now, like so that's how you can tell... Who is an Israelite? Because how do you tell? Because the, the people that come into your group, they tell you who their father is. I ask them. I ask them who their father is, who their father's father is. And how do they the prove it? it is up and how the do they prove At the end of the day, and how do they prove nobody it? Nobody here can see to be. Yeah. And how, so how, do how do they prove it? How do they prove it to you? What Ashra proof do you have? You know what that means? Ashra Khan got white yeah, boys yeah, and yeah, Hamites yeah, in his camp. I bet there's you. There's too much. There's just too much. You know. Yeah, hold on. How do you prove that they are Israelites? Because anybody can tell you anything. That Okay, so I don't know if you heard what I said to vocab about what my doctrine is. But what you do is you endure to the end in the law, statutes, and commandments and the faith of Hamashiach. And that, at the end of the day, is when we're going to learn. Because the scriptures say that the tares and the wheat going to be brought up together. Whether that's you being of a, a spiritual defect or you not being of that seed at the end of the day, that's when it's going to get separated. So the proof is to endure to the end. You accept the word of somebody who said that I'm an Israelite. 
So you got to make it. I mean, man, black Jesus man. minister. Like I'm yeah. trying to answer Sonetta's question. I, I got you, brother. But I'm saying to you, brother, you're not answering Sonetta's question. He just asked you. I'm trying question. to answer his question right now. Yeah, and okay, then, but come like, on, brother. But you 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 skirt around <laughs> the question. The question I'm is, sure if, a brother comes, if a brother <laughs> comes to you that might be a damn Hamite, okay, and that you ain't supposed to let no Hamites and white people in your camp, and says that I'm an Israelite, how do you make them prove to you right there on the spot that they are an Israelite? So, I don't know, did the chat hear me say that I would ask him where his forefathers come from? And after that, after he tells me where his forefathers come from, the, le the rest is up for the most high. I'll bring it out in the scripture. About the wheat. Imagine, the imagine so you that's just the take the word then. So you just take the word, right? You don't, you don't, you don't ask for no genealogy, no family tree, no DNA. That's that you're a grandma. Is my I mean, you even ask for oh, a grandma. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read, I'm read the Bible if that's okay. That's between I mean, that's that's all right, hold on. Let him read the Bible. Let him read the scripture, y'all. The white man. Uh, Matthew 13 and 25 says, "But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat, went and went his way." But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then had the tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, he root up the wheat with them. So it's not my job to go root people out and, and search their back family history and take them out the camp based off of my opinion about where they come wow. from. All I know is the demographics in which our people migrated to, and I go to those demographics. I don't meddle with other demographics. I don't go outside the United States and say, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't. And I don't go outside the United States outside of the countries where I know that it said that we were in uh, being put in places like Fort Judah in places where the Akan people had a, a oral tradition that said they came up from north of Egypt. I don't go outside those land masses and try to determine who came from where. So when you ask me how I go about it, I go about it like that. I preach the gospel to them and say the people that came here on slave ships and were sent from here on slave ships dealing with the Hispanic and the Native American. I tell them they come from a people that are God's chosen people and they're going to be. Ask you, um, yeah. um, do you would you say your ancestors came over here on slave ships? Yeah. Were they raped by the white man? There you go. I'm sure. No, hold on. Were they raped by the white man? Some of them were. Now you don't solve nothing. You better stop. Jesus, I'm going yeah. Hold on, man. Hold on. So hey, black Jesus, Jesus is a you, proud white them, man like. you consider these people to be your ancestors, right? Do you come do you come from them? The people that came on slave ships, yeah. And guess were what? They raped by the white man. Some of them were. So they how do you know your how do you know your great 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 grandfather was in the white man? How do you know that? My point the entire time was never I know that my great 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 grandfather isn't a product of something. What I'm saying is at the end of the day, there's a message to adhere to, and you either make the cut or you don't. Boy, you That's what I've been saying again and again. Bro. All right, gotcha. Yeah, at the end of the day, you the know worst what? Tech right. is black folks to show preferential treatment towards each other and tell Hispanic folks and, and black folks to look at each other the same way the white man look at his cohorts. Hey, so hold on, guys. Check out the Bible here. here. I have, I have two, a question. Ezra 262. In Ezra 262, after they returned from exile, it says that they searched their family records. They had to go through the registration. Here's what it says in the ESV These sought their registration among those enrolled in the genealogies, but they were not found there. And so they were excluded from the priesthood as unclean. So the uh -oh. actual real Israelites were checked the actual genealogy logical records of the Levites Ooh. and saw that some of them didn't have them and they kicked them out of the priesthood. You have a guy who says my dad was hastened. You say welcome on in Mr. Levite. That's the uh -oh. sloppiness of your religion and yet you uh -huh. don't practice what they was doing in Israel. Okay. 262. You know what I'm so they had to go in the temple. Oh, let, let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Right, so, so, Is so he I right, brother? Look at, he's going by scripture so I know you got to so, agree with him. What, what he's, he's doing is scripture. 
This is dealing with me? that was dealing with the high priest. Are, are you asking me? We gotta be we gotta because be right about, about the one at a time. Everybody can't we can't understand when everybody's speaking. Hold on, that was dealing with high priests. That was dealing with the high priest. Right. Not the Israelites yeah, till the day will call their Not leaders the high priest. Not just Levites. Nobody calls the really yeah. my, my, point is, my point is that's the carefulness that needs to be done in regards no, to these matters. Just, and they will call themselves high priest still today. 